Hello and welcome to Learn ADS in 5 Minutes. This is tutorial 63 on de embedding in ADS. Before we start, subscribe to my channel. Once you subscribe, click on the bell icon to enable all the notifications. And after you watch the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues. Now let's go ahead and understand this important concept which we need from time to time. And the process is called de embedding. Now, what actually is de embedding? De embedding is a process by which you can remove the effect of your fixtures, connectors, cables, or any unwanted, uh, you know, interconnect when you're trying to characterize a particular uh, device and test, either in simulation or during the measurement. Now, here I do have a very simple test bench to illustrate this concept. And I hope after this short video, you'll be very clear on how to perform de embedding in ADS. Now, here I do have three sets of data. The first data is this parameter file, which I will use as my reference data. That means this is the raw data of the device, which I should be able to see. However, due to my own testing methods or the way I have tested the component, I do have certain fixture. Uh, you know, effects included into the overall simulation. And finally, I have removed the effect of those fixture by using these de embedded components. So before I go and explain how to use this de embedded components in ADS, let's go ahead and perform the simulation so that we can observe all the results. Now here on the top side, what you will notice I have S11 and S33. So S11 is what I would expect my device to provide. However, due to the way I have done the testing, I ended up seeing this blue response and you can very clearly see they are different. And same thing is also shown to you in a rectangle or XY plot. And that fixture not only affects the reflection performance of my device, but also it affects the transmission response. So if you are measuring the device as you know something what is shown in blue, you are not able to characterize the device to its true performance. However, if you look at the bottom plot here, you will see S11 and S55. Now, if you remember, S55 is where I have performed the de embedding. And now after we do that, you can see the response after de embedding is exactly the same as I was expecting. So this means to say I have successfully de-embedded the extra things from my measurements and I'm able to now see the true nature of my circuit. So this is how important it is. So now let's spend a couple of minutes understanding how do we perform this de-embedding. Now to, to get this de-embedding components, you can go to data items library as I'm showing here. And there you will find quite a few de embedding component. Now, if you are not sure about how many um, you know ports you have or what kind of de embedding component you need, you can simply take this black box data. Now, uh, this title here you can change it depending upon number of ports. For example, if I call it D underscore embed two. And now it will change its shape to two port component and the third pin is reference pin, which you can ground. So similarly, you can make it four port and now you have a four port symbol or depending upon how you are doing measurement accordingly, the symbol is dynamic. It will keep on changing um, the data which you want. Now, once you have this de embedded component, you in the center is where you have the combined data that means the total measurement which you have performed. Now, if you have data for the fixture or the extra cable or connector, whatever you might have used in order to do this measurement, you can associate the S2P file in this team bed component and then connect it in series with the total result which you have captured. So here in this case, you can see I have two de embed components, one on the left hand side, one on the right hand side of this um, S parameter file because they correspond to extra feed lines which I had uh, to make on my PCB to perform this measurement. Now this data can be obtained either by doing a measurement only on the fixture 
if you have that capability in your lab, or you could perform uh, some kind of electromagnetic simulation of the assembly so that you have this parameter data which you need to remove from the overall uh, results which you had. Now in this team bed component, if you double click, uh, you can select the file, which is basically either the measurement or simulation file. You can define the pin and port mapping uh, for this component by default. The pin number one of this component will be equal to port number one contained in your S parameter file. Two will belong to two. However, depending upon how you have done measurement, not necessarily every time you connected your vector network analyzer like this, or you performed EM simulation like this. So in case the, the file does not follow the same order, you can change the pin to port mapping to custom. And now you can give the corresponding uh, port name in the data file which you've obtained. For example, I can change it to eight, I can change it to three and so on and so forth. So you can do the pin connection to the internal port or the S parameter file correlation with that. So it is so simple to perform de embedding uh, using ADS software. I hope this video was helpful to you in order to understand how to perform de embedding and obtain the device performance as you ever wanted. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Wish you all the best in your design work.